The study of human anatomy is critical for medical students, and the John A. Burns School of Medicine's Wild Body Program is essential for students here in Hawaii. Today, we're speaking with a familiar face, the widow of beloved Uncle Kirk Matthews, Linda Koval. Aloha. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about you and Uncle Kirk. I've been in Hawaii since 1969 on the air, and in 81, Bob Seavey told me, Linda, you gotta go back to Oregon. They need you. They've never had a woman at the CBS affiliate there. I went, there was a guy in the parking lot, and he said, uh, are you here to work on the news? And I said, yes, I am, you know, like a Hawaii girl. And he goes, I want you to know that everybody upstairs hates your guts because they wanted that job, all the women upstairs. That was Kirk. And two years later, I persuaded him to come back. And we worked on the air together after getting married in 84. We've been married 33 years. Uh, I was so lucky. He went through so many different things and we all laughed it off. And then all of a sudden they just diagnosed the cancer in the lung. Uncle Kirk was such a giver to the community throughout his entire life. And then he continued to give even after. What did that mean to you? Oh, they had the willed body ceremony thing. And all the students are there in white jackets and white lays. And it's so wonderful to see them share how valuable that last moment that they had with our loved ones, how important that was to them, and how much they learned. And they had the big pictures on the wall of all the people who contributed. They gave me hope that he wanted this and he's gonna continue giving. He always used to end his newscasts by saying, take care of each other. So if anyone is interested, how can they get more information? Explore the option and understand that not everyone in your family may be into it, but if it's something that your loved one wants, it is a wonderful opportunity. It's so easy, you just mail them a request. Would you please send me a form? I would like to consider the Jabsom Will Body Project, and they send information. He donated for the last time part of him, you know, to the, the next generation. He was always so conscious and aware of the future and that he may not be part of it, but he was able to make a difference. This segment is sponsored by University Health Partners of Hawaii and the John A. Burns School of Medicine. We see it in the headlines often, mental health issues afflicting thousands of people, some even to the point of tragedy. And with the shortage of mental health care specialists, university health partners and the John A. Burns School of Medicine are using a team-based approach in hopes of bridging the gap so that no one suffers in silence. We have a lot of issues going on right now with mental health needs. Of course, the things that we see in the headlines, a substantial amount of substance use disorders, we certainly see all of those things here in Hawaii. And then also underneath that, there's a lot of people who are quietly suffering with depression or anxiety or other health issues that may or may not rise to the level of attention. They may not be coming to a primary care or other provider at all. The other thing is detection. So screening for common conditions like depression and anxiety, which are actually very common. If they are detected, another issue is that we don't have enough mental health providers to provide treatment for everyone that needs it. The social isolation that we have on, on neighbor islands is critical and the psychiatrists are almost all primarily located on Oahu, so they often end up in the primary care setting getting whatever we can do or dropping out of care entirely. At least 50% of mental health issues are dealt with primary care providers, uh, some communities a lot more. And surprisingly, we find people that we are pleasant in the office but have real situations at home with really no resources. Our training is really limited. When we get people that have serious mental illness, our knowledge about how to manage them um, really becomes uh, problematic. We here at University Health Partners of Hawaii employ integrated approaches to behavioral health care. What this means is that we want to partner with our primary care colleagues to make sure that we're delivering patient-centered and team-based care to patients who have mental health needs. We treat a lot of patients via telehealth or telemedicine on the Big Island, on Maui, Kauai, and Lanai. Hi there. 
How are things going over in Lanai? This really enables us to expand the reach that we have and the amount of patients whose care we can be involved in. And he, he began to come around with that, but I'd, I'd like your suggestion. We also use the same technology to provide consultation services directly to other primary care providers about their patients with behavioral health issues. It saves them a lot of time to traveling to Oahu to see someone face to face. Instead, they can see the person on the island or close to where they live, and they get timely access to psychiatric consultation. The head and the body are connected. If we don't manage both, well, we miss the opportunity of providing you know, high quality care. And I think that once we shift away from sort of this incentive driven healthcare system we have and start asking the question of how are we going to deliver high quality care, the technology and the telehealth become the only answer. This segment is sponsored by University Health Partners of Hawaii and the John A. Burns School of Medicine.